Since childhood, Elena has loved books about the journey around the world of a witch named Nike. She also really wanted to travel around like that, so she put all her effort into studying and trying to become a talented witch. When she grew up, Elena took the exam and set a record for being the youngest person to pass the magic test. However, to become an official witch, she must be accepted as a disciple and recognized by another witch. Elena went everywhere, asking to become a disciple, but all the witches rejected her because she was too young. She accidentally heard her parents talking about Stardust Witch, so she decided to go find that witch and ask to become a disciple. In the deep forest, Elena found Stardust Witch, but she looked very odd. Elena was about to go home, but she thought that only that witch could help her, so she decided to come and say hello, and unexpectedly, the Stardust Witch knew about Elena. Elena thought that Stardust Witch would reject her, but Stardust Witch agreed, making her very happy. From that day on, Elena stayed with the Stardust Witch, she called her Fran Sensei. Many days had passed, and Fran Sensei didn't teach her magic at all but only ordered her to do trivial tasks such as buying food to cook, giving massages, and so on. Elena was very dissatisfied, but she chose to endure. A month passed, and Fran said it was time for her to take the test, which surprised Elena because she hadn't been taught anything. Then the two came to an open field, and Fran cast a series of spells towards Elena, causing her to not have time to move and fall to the ground. Elena stood up with a dirty face and responded with an attack, but it was quickly blocked. Even though she tried, in the end, she was still beaten to a pulp by Fran. She immediately burst into tears, causing Fran to panic and not know how to comfort her. After a while, Fran hugged Elena tightly, comforted her, and apologized for being too harsh. Elena screamed at Sensei for believing in trying and enduring all this time but Fran had no intention of teaching her to become a witch. After all, she was no different from the witches who had rejected her before. At this point, Fran told the truth. She was asked by Elena's parents to teach her what it means to fail and give up. She received gold from Elena's parents to do this. At first, Fran intended to impose harsh challenges that would make her give up. But Elena is the type of person who doesn't give up easily, so those challenges were meaningless to her. This is Elena's strength and also her weakness. Sensei told her to change and learn to say no to things she doesn't like. From then on, Fran started teaching her magic. Although sometimes Fran was a bit harsh, Elena found it very interesting. After a year of diligent training, Elena became much stronger and was given a badge by Fran which recognized her as an official witch. Sense gave her the title the Ashen Witch. The reason is simple. This girl's hair is gray like the color of an ashen. But it sounds cool. The course ended. Elena said goodbye to Fran and returned home. Now that she has become a real witch, she asks her parents for permission to begin her exciting journey. Before leaving, her mother told her that she must return one day and be happy. Father also gave her a lovely witch outfit and a diary. He wanted his daughter to record her journey and tell him about it when she returned. So the story of the Ashen Witch officially begins. Elena's first stop is the Kingdom of Magicians. This is where magic is widely used and witches are respected as noble members of society. Since Elena had become an official witch, she was easily allowed into the capital. Most people here move around using magic brooms. Elena was looking around when she encountered a girl named Saya. This damaged the roof of a resident's home. Elena immediately used magic to repair the roof. After finishing work, Elena said goodbye to Ms. Saya and went to find a motel. But she didn't understand why all the hotels refused to let her rent a room. She goes to a shabby motel and accidentally sees Saya. Saya panics when she sees Elena, thinking she is here for revenge. But when she learned that Elena came here to rent a room, she calmed down and thanked Elena for what happened earlier. Saya also agreed to reduce the room price for this witch. Elena then realized her witch badge was missing. That's why the previous hotel managers rejected her. Elena and Saya split up to look for it, but they still couldn't find it. Returning to the inn, Elena blamed herself for losing the precious gift that Sensei had given her. That night, Saya comes to Elena to ask for her help in passing the witch trainee exam. Elena agrees to become Saya's sensei. Elena focuses on teaching Saya about magic because her current skills are very poor. First, she teaches Saya how to control a broom. Saya also learns very quickly. The next day, Saya also learned how to use attack magic. Elena doesn't hide her profession, and she teaches Saya how to cheat on tests. A few days later, Elena taught Saya while looking for the badge. She returned to the place where she fell and asked the old lady next door, but she pretended to have lost her memory. She had to give her a gold coin before she would say a few things. That night, Saya brought a pillow and asked to sleep with Elena. 
Belena says that now that Saya has improved, she won't need her help anymore, and she asks her to return the badge. It turns out that Saya planned to collide with Elena to steal her badge. She wants Elena to stay here with her. She cried and explained that it was just because she didn't want to be alone. So Elena flicked her finger on her forehead and told her to try to achieve her goals herself and not rely on others. Elena had experienced the same feeling of loneliness as Saya, so she understood very well. So she gave Saya her spare hat as if she was always by Saya's side. Saya emotionally hugged Elena and burst into tears. Six months have passed, and Elena has come to a new land. When she reads the newspaper, she sees that Saya has become a trainee witch. In the article, Saya also mentioned Elaine and wished to meet her again someday. Today, Elena passed through a field of thousands of flowers and saw a red-haired girl picking flowers, so she approached to ask for directions. The girl knew Elena was a traveler, so she wrapped a bouquet of flowers in a cloth and asked her to give it to anyone to introduce this flower field. Elena took the bouquet of flowers and left, but when she reached the gate of a castle, she was stopped by a guard. He was very excited and snatched the bouquet of flowers from Elena's hand and inquired about its origin. Another guard came to intervene. He then explained that the soldier's sister was missing, which was why he was so agitated. He also added that the flower Elena brought was forbidden because it was poisonous. This type of poison is harmless to witches but will cause normal people's minds to become crazy. They will be like bees that come to the place where these flowers are and become food for them. Hearing this event, Elena remembered the content of a book she once read about mutated plants that would absorb magic power, develop thinking, and be violent towards humans. To confirm, Elena returned to the flower field and saw the soldier she met yesterday there. The red-haired girl from the other day was his sister. He hugged his sister tightly, even though her sister had turned into a tree. He himself is being eaten by the flowers here. Elena continues her journey and meets a boy who is looking for happiness. He converted happy emotions into magic power and collected it in a vase to give to the person he liked. The girl he likes is named Nino, who is a servant in his house. Nino's expression always looked gloomy, so he wanted her to cheer up. This reminded Elena of a story in a book she once read about a husband who wandered around collecting beautiful scenes in the world to bring them back to show to his sick wife at home. The boy invited Elena to his house for lunch. As soon as she entered the house, she met Nino, a shy and always sad girl. Hearing the boy say he wanted to give her a gift, she immediately refused. He had to tell her it was an order before she would accept it. Then the two of them went into the kitchen to cook. Elena sat in the living room when she met the village chief. His eyes looked at her very unkindly. Next, the food was served. After finishing the meal, Elena asked the village chief about Nino and learned that she was an eastern slave that he bought to do housework. At this moment, Nino came to clear the table but dropped the dishes, causing them to break. The village chief immediately became angry and scolded Nino. Elena saw that and used magic to restore the dishes, causing the village chief to change his attitude and no longer look as uncomfortable as before. Then Elena and the village chief's son, Emily went to the back of the house. Elena reminds him that it's the right time to give Nino a gift. Hearing that, Emily happily brought the gift to give to the person she liked. When the lid of the jar was opened, scenes of other people's happiness were shown before Nino's eyes, making her eyes well up with tears. Emily told Nino not to be sad all the time. He would make her happy and make her emotional. Elena then said goodbye to Emily and Nino to continue her journey. On the way, she remembered the ending of the book she had read. In that book, the wife, after seeing the beautiful scenes her husband showed her, became desperate and thought about death because she couldn't move. So what you think about others is not necessarily true. And what Emily does for Nino may not make her happier. Usually in fairy tales, the princess will be with the prince, but in a certain kingdom, the princess fell in love with an ordinary chef. They fell in love secretly, and the princess carried their baby. On this journey, Elena will witness the end of that story. This time, Elena came to a desolate and cold country without a single soul. She went to a castle to stay and met a woman dressed very elegantly, claiming to be Princess Mira of the kingdom but having lost her memory. Everything she knew about the kingdom was written down in one letter. Mira told Elena that this kingdom was destroyed by a monster named Chevalier. It only appears when it's dark and disappears when it's light. Its purpose is to kill everyone in this country, including Mira. However, the castle where the princess lived was surrounded by a barrier, so the monster could not enter. Mira considered defeating the monster her mission, so she decided to fight it the next night. The next day, Mira asked Elena to help her dig a trap hole to lure the monster into. After digging the hole, Mira rode to lead the monster to the trap. When the chevalier fell into the hole, Mira continuously attacked it from above. The monster also breathed fire, causing the surrounding forest to burn. 
But Mira above was not harmed and just continued to attack it with lightning. When the monster was in pain, Mira gradually remembered everything in the past. She continued to attack and then used a sword to finish off the monster, who was also her father. Mira is the princess who falls in love with the chef. When she discovered that she had a child, she informed her father, but he was determined not to tolerate their relationship, so he ordered the chef to be burned alive right in front of the princess. The princess's child could not escape death either. From then on, Mira vowed to kill them all. First, she put up a barrier to keep the castle safe. She then left the letter herself and cursed her father to turn him into a monster. She forced her father to kill his subjects himself while still having memories so he could feel what it was like to be angry and take away something important. Everything went according to Mira's plan, but after that, she did not leave the kingdom but continued to live in the castle, and had the illusion that her lover was still by her side. Elena quietly left the kingdom and continued her exploration. Today while walking on the street, Elena saw a book about Fran's adventures. The main character of the book not only has the same name as her master but also her face. Elena looked at the book and remembered her destination half a year ago. That place was the kingdom of Celesteria. She went to the Royal Magic School and wanted to visit, but was stopped by the guards, so she had to leave. But as she was flying away, Elena was stopped by two students who invited her to follow them without any questions asked. Elena refused to leave when she discovered she was surrounded by a group of students. They announced that they would use all their strength to capture her, but Elena was not afraid. They split up to attack Elena, but were easily defeated by Elena. After a day of fighting and playing the cat and mouse game, by the afternoon, the students still couldn't catch Elena. Suddenly a familiar voice spoke up. The owner of the voice was Fran, Elena's master. Fran is working as a teacher at the Royal Magic School. Fran knew she was in this city through the guard's description of an ash-haired girl. So Fran asked her students to find Elena so she could train them. Next, the two of them talked. Fran asked Elena why she wanted to travel. Elena replied that it was because of the influence of Nike's adventure book. Unexpectedly, Fran also liked that book very much. She even used to travel and write novels. Sensei told Elena to write down her journey and tell her about it someday. The next day, Fran introduced Elena to her students, and she became a special teaching assistant for that class. Elena is excited to share her knowledge and experience with the students. Fran took Elena to her favorite place to see the whole city. Elena asked Sensei about the students' future and was told that they would do normal jobs such as delivering cargo in the air or performing, but they didn't do it for money but for passion. That's just like how Elena likes to go on trips. Elena felt very moved when in this country, she felt this was a special place in her journey. Fran suddenly asked her what she liked besides traveling. It seemed like Fran wanted to give her favorite student a parting gift. Although Elena said she liked books, Fran said Elaine liked flowers, and she told her to come to the school gate tomorrow. The next morning, Elena arrived at the school gate but did not see Fran. She decided to continue her journey. But as she turned away, thousands of flower petals fell from the sky. That was the gift that the master and the students gave her. Upon receiving this special gift, Elena was very happy and continued her journey. The next place Elena visited was the country of honest people. This country especially has no liars because the king used the strange power of a sword to create a barrier capable of preventing people from lying. As soon as she entered the city, Elena wanted to take a lie test but failed. She also discovered that people here not only have to be honest with their words but also with their writing. Suddenly, she heard a noise in a corner, so she went to look. It turned out that two men were fighting. When the two were about to punch each other, a witch stopped them. When the witch saw Elaine, she froze and then turned into an emotional state. It turns out she is Saya. She became a witch and works for the Magic Association. She gave herself the title Charcoal Witch because she thought it was similar to Elena's title. Then the two met a strange girl named Ihamia. Ihamia communicates with others through writing on paper. It's not that she doesn't want to talk, it's that she has lost her voice. Ihamia told the two of them that she was a witch in the palace. Half a year ago, she used all her magic power, even sacrificing her voice, to help the king create a sword that prevents lying. However, after Ihamia lost her usefulness, she was kicked out of the palace. Now she wants to ask Elena and Saya to help destroy the sword so she can recover her magic power and voice. Both of them agreed. They then discussed a plan to break into the palace. Elena thinks of a way to break into the palace. If she couldn't write an entire lie, she wrote each word on paper and put them together to give to the guards. They successfully deceived the guards and entered the palace. Once inside, they found the king and asked him to hand over the sword. 
but the king did not agree, so Elena and Saya were forced to fight. Elena fought and advised the king, but it was ineffective. Furthermore, Saya couldn't deal with the guards, so Elena decided it was time for this to end. She used her broom to knock down the king and then used magic to create a hammer that hit the sword, causing it to shatter. Just as the sword shattered, Bahamia has regained her magic power and voice. People's lives are also bustling again. The king then realized his mistake and apologized in front of all his subjects. Ahamia was also reinstated in the royal palace. Saya also said goodbye to Elena and returned to the association. Before leaving, Saya gave Elena a necklace, which she used all her money to buy. The two of them agreed to meet again and then split up to continue their own journey. In the book The Adventures of Nike, Nike once visited a country divided by a wall, and the people on both sides of the wall always wanted them to be better than the other side. Nike proposed an idea, she used a knife to carve the words. This side of the country is wonderful, then go to the other side of the wall and engrave the same words. Since then, a custom has been established here that any traveler passing through engraves an inscription on the wall. Ten years later, Saya visited this country and saw that the wall was engraved with many words. She also took a knife to carve on it many times, saying, I love Elena. Saya then suggested that everyone here engrave on the wall their feelings or hopes to help them look towards the future. Not long after, Elena also arrived in this country and discovered the wall had been destroyed. She was told that people here started carving on the wall but then erased it because the words became embarrassing memories. Gradually, the wall was destroyed, and people realized there was no need to compete with each other anymore. From then on, they lived together in harmony. After listening to the story, Elena felt that this was the best outcome, but she still regretted not being able to see the wall with her own eyes. Elena's next destination is a winemaking village. Although there is no dividing wall here, it is divided into this village and that village. Elena talked to the village chief and learned that both villages produced wine, but that village's revenue was higher because it had a label with a picture of a cute girl named Rosa Marie. Their wine is introduced by Rosa directly stepping on the grapes to brew the wine. Elena proposed that this village also hire cute girls to step on grapes, so the village chief asked Elena to help him. They let Elena change and then put the grapes in a bucket so she could step on them. At that moment, Rosa came to provoke and criticize Elena for being flat-chested and looking like a child. Definitely won't win against her. After hearing this, Elena was extremely angry and treated the grapes like Rosa trampled on them. After a day of stepping on grapes, Elena's feet were tired. Elena realized that if the grapes in that village were all trampled by Rosa, she would have to do it from morning to night and would not have had time to come and provoke her. So she and the village chief went to that village to investigate and discovered that all the grapes were stepped on by men, not Rosa. Elaine tied Rosa up. The men saw their goddess captured, so they threw grapes at the village chief. The boys of this village also threw grapes at the boys of that village. The two villages fought each other while Elena drank wine until she became drunk. Seeing this, Elaine immediately used magic to shoot grapes at the men, even causing the village chief to lose consciousness. When the village chief woke up, Elena had left. That day is also the beginning of the village's traditional grape-throwing festival after each harvest. Gradually, the two village chiefs no longer disagreed but cooperated with each other. The village chief and Rosa also changed from rivals to a couple. This time, Elena comes to a country filled with dolls. Harish meets the night witch Sheila, who is investigating the case of the Ripper, who took the lives of hundreds of girls. She asked Elena to let her know if she had any clues. Elena continued walking around and discovered a store giving away free dolls, so she stopped by. There are many dolls here that are very delicately made. The owner of this shop makes dolls to give to people, not to sell. Her goal is to see the smiling faces of others. She told Elena to get a doll. But looking at them so much like real people made Elena a little scared, so Elena refused. However, when she rented a room, she discovered there was a doll in her room. She didn't pay attention, threw it in the closet, and went to sleep. Waking up the next morning, Elena discovered that her hair had been cut short. She realized that the Ripper took the girl's hair, so she immediately found Sheila to tell her about this. Sheila went to investigate Elena's room and found that the doll Elena threw into the closet was gone. Inside, only the doll's hair remained. This is very similar to other cases of the Ripper. It is possible that the culprit manipulated the dolls with magic so that they replaced their hair with the victim's hair. The two of them decided to go out to investigate. But when they passed the reception desk, Elena discovered that the innkeeper's doll's hair was as smooth as human hair, so she immediately turned back to question the innkeeper. He said he bought the doll at a black market auction, so the two decided to go there. 
The auction place is like an opera room. The auctioned items are dolls. Elena discovered that one of them was the one in her room, but its hair had been changed to her gray hair. As soon as the chairman announced the start of the auction, Elena used magic to hit him and then went up to the floor to ask the Ripper to show up. Seeing that the culprit refused to reveal himself, Elena broke the doll's head in her hand, then pulled its hair and stomped it on the ground. The culprit was finally revealed, it was the doll shop owner. It turned out that she did so just to satisfy the pleasure of seeing people's expressions. Elena and Sheila then join forces to capture her. Elena uses magic to make her hair long like before. The case was solved, and Sheila handed the culprit over to the Magic Association. At this moment, Saya appeared. She heard Sheila talk about meeting a witch with ash-colored hair and the same necklace that Saya was wearing. Saya becomes jealous and goes on a rampage, sending several lightning bolts at the Ripper. During the long journey, Elena had run out of money and was starving in the Lostos Country Square. During a difficult time, she accidentally picked up a short-term witch recruitment flyer. Elena immediately went to the registration place and met Estelle, a talented witch. The two chatted, and then Estelle offered a very attractive salary. The special thing is that Estelle only asked Elena to be her companion and not to do any difficult work. Estelle told Elena about the murderer in District 2. Her name was Selena, she was Estelle's best friend 10 years ago. Selena's family was murdered, then Selena was adopted by her uncle. But the uncle treated her very badly, so she felt resentment and killed the uncle herself. From then on, Selena became addicted to murder and became a murderer. Three years ago, Estelle followed the king's orders and personally captured and executed her best friend. Since the day Selena was executed, Estelle has been researching ways to turn back time to change her fate. However, to turn back time, Estelle must pay with all her magic power, so she needs a witch to accompany her to share her magic power through a pair of special rings. Elena also wanted to know what Lostos was like 10 years ago, so she agreed to go with Estelle. After Estelle poured magic power into the teleporter, the two successfully returned to 10 years ago, but they only had an hour there. Estelle decides to go to Selena's house to prevent her family from being murdered. On the way, they met Selena walking on the street. Estelle rushed to hug Selena and said that she came from the future. But Selena considered her a pervert, so she ran away. Next, Estelle went to meet Selena's parents and led them out of the house to avoid being killed. Elena waited near Selena's house but did not see Estelle return. At this moment, Elena's magic power was sucked away, proving that Estelle was fighting someone. She followed the magic power to the place and discovered that not only Selena's parents but even Estelle were lying in a pool of blood. The murderer is Selena. She said the reason she killed her parents was because they abused her. Dad acted perversely towards her. When her mother found out, she got jealous and beat her. Their happiness is just a false outer shell. Next, Selena rushed to attack Elena, but she used magic to knock her away. At this moment, Estelle woke up. She knew she couldn't change the outcome, so she decided to kill Selena to prevent a future tragedy. Elena wanted to stop her, so she took off her magic sharing ring. Unable to use Elena's magic power, Estelle exchanged her memories of Selena for magic power to strike and kill Selena. After everything, Elena and Estelle returned to their old world. Estelle has forgotten everything related to Selena, while Elena realizes she is just a wandering witch who is still immature and cannot do anything to help others change their fate. She sat in the square and cried like a child. At the Magic Association, Saya is assigned by Sheila to bring an old box to the association branch in Quinorts. Sheila told her not to open the box because it was very dangerous. After Saya left, Sheila also went to the Royal Academy to find Senpai Fran to go on a trip together. On the way, they remembered their memories of traveling with their master when they were still apprentice witches. One day they received a request from the Magic Association, so they stopped by the city of Quinorts, which did not seem to welcome witches because there were anti-witch posters everywhere. The task assigned to them by the association is to deal with the Antiquities Gang, which is an organization that specializes in robbing and insulting witches. They have special weapons, so the association and the witches cannot do anything. Gradually, witches were no longer trusted by the people. After hearing the situation, the master decided to accept this mandate but let her two disciples handle the matter. Fran and Sheila have opposite personalities, so they dislike each other very much. That's why, in the process of doing their missions, they always get in each other's way. As a result, several days have passed, and they have not caught any of the antiquities gang. One day, Fran was sitting in a restaurant when a woman came up to talk to her. After talking for a while, Fran discovered that everyone in the restaurant was part of the antiquities gang. The person who started talking to her was the leader. They weren't afraid of her because they were outnumbered. 
they capture Fran and take her to their lair. Arriving there, Fran discovered that Sheila had also been arrested. While the leader was yelling at his subordinates, the two silently helped each other untie themselves. Then Sheila provoked the leader, making her angry and ordering her subordinates to deal with the two of them. But no matter how many people there were, they were no match for Fran and Sheila. After a few moves, the two of them defeated the Antiquities gang. The two sat down to rest and shared with each other their reasons for wanting to become witches. They gradually understand each other and get closer to each other. After capturing the Antiquities gang, the three of them continued to travel. At the end of the trip, the master gave her two disciples badges, recognizing them as adult witches. She gave them both titles. Fran with black hair is the Stardust Witch. Sheila with shiny hair is the Dark Witch. Back to the present, Fran and Sheila are traveling when suddenly Sheila remembers the item in the old box, so she quickly changes destinations to chase Saya. Elena is also heading towards the city of Quinort, the place written about in Nike's Book of Adventures and where Nike's two disciples, Fran and Sheila successfully completed their mission. In Quinort City, Elena reads the news that Curio Company has returned after 20 years. Witches are at risk. Elena wondered if this was the antique gang from Nike Adventures or just a copycat gang. To avoid suspicion, she changed her witch outfit to a lovely dress and confidently walked around. At this time, Saya also arrived in Quinort City. She was about to go to the association but was called by an old lady. She started a conversation with Saya to buy time for her accomplices to steal the box from her bag, but was unsuccessful. It turned out that she was the leader of the ancient antiquities gang. Unable to steal it, she had another plan to make Saya open the lid of the box. Saya continued to approach the association but was suddenly pulled into a small corner. Saya thought she was a bad guy but in front of her was a lovely girl named Mina. Elena visits the diner where Fran met the leader of the Antiquities gang. The leader from afar saw Elena with a foolish look, thinking she was going to open the magic box, so she shot a magic bullet at Elena, exchanging her soul with Saya. Elena was stunned. When she opened her eyes, she saw that she was with a black-haired girl and had a box in her hand, so she conveniently opened it. As soon as the box was opened, a pink aura immediately dispersed throughout the city. Elena held her breath so she wouldn't be exposed to this gas. The black-haired girl rushed to hug Elena. She even wanted to kiss her, but was knocked out by Elena. The people on the street were extremely chaotic, chasing each other to express their love. Elena guessed the reason was because she opened the box. She exited the alley and saw her body standing at the restaurant. When she got closer, she discovered that the person in her body was Saya. Both have had their souls swapped. At this moment, the Curio Company's people looted everywhere, but they were quickly tied up by Elena and Saya. The two forced them to reveal the leader's whereabouts and then went there to arrest her. At first, she laughed loudly and said that her accomplices were so numerous that they had probably robbed the entire city. But just then, Fran and Sheila walked in and told them to get rid of them, leaving her in despair. After dealing with Curio Company's people, Elena used the box to absorb all the pink gas. The next day, Elena and Saya had their souls swapped. The teachers and students sat at the restaurant, chatting with each other. Everything in this city was over. Sheila took her two disciples back to the association, while Saya struggled to go with Elena. Elena recognized Fran's master as Witch Knight but didn't ask much. The two talked and then said goodbye. Elena continues her journey and stops in the country that can grant all wishes. Stepping through the gate, she discovered that everything here was a place she had been to before. She met a girl exactly like herself in the castle. The girl introduced herself as Ashen Witch, named Elena. And in this castle, there are currently 15 other Elena. Each Elena in this castle is a different character. For example, the Cash Elena, the Dumb Elena, Elena crazy about big breasts, etc. Elena wearing glasses is the intellectual Elena. After consulting with everyone, they decided to name her protagonist Elena. The Elena gathered in this castle because this country was invaded by the violent Elena. She's violent and attacks every time she meets another Elena. Protagonist Elena wonders if they are all Elena, so their strength will be the same, so why don't they fight? Intellectual Elena says that since they are all Elena, they don't know what will happen if one of them dies. At this moment violent Elena entered, she alone fought with all the remaining Elena, leaving them all bruised. Elena realizes that violent Elena is another version of herself, but she has short hair because she doesn't have enough magical power to reattach her hair in the doll country. She became violent because she blamed herself for not being able to save anyone in the country of Lostos. The two Elena then pursue and fight in the air, because they were evenly matched in talent. Even though the two of them fought to the point of exhausting their magic power, they still couldn't determine the winner or loser. Both lay exhausted on the ground. 
At this point, Elena shared that she came here and met the others, probably wanting to see a different ending. Because on the journey there can be many different choices, who knows, maybe she would have made other choices. Another ending happened that was different from the one she had in the present. Violent Elena was the same. Maybe she came here to see that other Elena did not have to go through the suffering of Lostos. After talking, the two Elena gradually understood each other. Returning to the castle, all Elena exchanged diaries to read about their various journeys. Elena suggests everyone one day write their journey into a book like Nike Adventures. Everyone agreed, then everyone fell asleep. Elena opened her eyes and saw herself lying in a meadow. In her hand, she held a diary called Elena's Journey. It turns out that everything that happened before was a dream and her journey is now truly beginning.